Today I bring you two in one. As the great bass player Francois Rabat would say, that means I'm going to teach you how to construct a good bass solo and a good shoe rack for your closet. Stay tuned. But we have different bases and different rooms, different situations, so we must adapt. For both of these things, first you need an idea, a reason. Why do a bass solo? You can have different reasons. You want maybe variety in your music. Maybe you play pop music and everything is guitar solo and piano solo or, or saxophone solo and you want to incorporate a bass solo. Also because you want to change the, the texture and the color of the music. Maybe you might want a darker sound just to you know bring the, the, the energy down a little bit and, and let the bass have a nice solo. Or it could be because it is your band and you want to play. You're the bass player so you want to play the bass solo uh, in every tune. So whatever the, the reason I'm going to teach you how to construct and how to think about it so that it is effective. One of my teachers, great uh, Potter Smith, told us in a class never to say no to a, an opportunity to do a solo. Of course, if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to sound bad, maybe not do it. But if you can do something, just if you can do, even if it's just a... Uh, average solo take it we got a reason for building a shoe rack that's a lot easier than playing a solo on the bass so we don't want this we want this however for both of these things we must plan ahead and have an idea and adjust at the last minute to whatever is happening we have to take in consideration when we're doing a bass solo, an upright or electric bass, the room, because if we're at a big room with, you know, hard walls, it's going to sound like this. And that might affect, the room is going to affect the sound and the, what people are going to understand or not. Or at a small place like this. The acoustic upright bass gives you a deep sound, it has thick strings, but, but it's clear. upright basses have usually a deeper punchier sound like this Electric basses have uh, more more mid range sound, more punchy, like a, like a piano string almost. So you can play 
lot faster and people can understand what you're doing. Building the shoe rack, you should take your decisions on how tall and wide or how many shelves, the space between them, the colors, then you cut the wood and decide which screws you want, make the pilot holes and drill the sides. You can drill the sides both at the same time so you get the holes right in the same place. Then put everything together and you have your shoe rack. With a bass solo, you can think of a style or a direction before you start. It could be jazz, it could be rocky, it could be fusion, it could be... So you gotta be ready to kind of like, you know, you, you frame your, your, um, your bass solo. And remember, when you start, you have to adjust to the place, adjust to the rest of the musicians, adjust to the bass you're playing. Usually you can play low register slower and the high, the high register you can play it faster. Usually that, generally that's best. Unless you want an effect, if you want to do a rumble, that, that's uh, up to you. But if you want to play something uh, that people can understand, you're doing a solo, uh, you should um, do that better, you know, high, fast, low, slow. One of the most common things that I see in beginners and students and is that they don't uh, communicate, you know. Remember, it's all about communication. The solo, the playing you do is communicating to the audience, but also with the other musicians in the band. So it's not all scales and arpeggios and riffs that you practice at home. Remember that there has to be some kind of feeling and listen for other rhythms and other ideas that the, the, the other players are, are giving you, you know, answer to them. Keep your ears open because it's all about communicating. It's not about you know, learning something and then playing it like a, like a you know, 
like a recording. It's not a recording. Improvising is an art, and you need to be aware of what's happening. So remember, unity. You need unity. See, in other words, you need uh, ideas that repeat. You need repetition. That that will give you unity. Da di da da, da di da da, da di da da, da di da da. That's uh, unity. But you also need variety. So be able to play fast at a certain moment. Play slow. Choose your notes. Try both and try to play intense at the end. Take it to the climax. Come back in the big room. Might have to play a little slower, more clear. In a small room or studio, then you can do uh, a lot faster stuff and, and go crazy. Okay, so I hope this helps you to make a better bass solo, and see you next time.